What's going on? Welcome back everybody, droidlife.com. I'm gonna whip through a tutorial today just on how to show you how you can upgrade uh, your ROM, the custom ROM you're using in ROM Manager. Currently you can just do this with uh, Cyanogen as far as I know, but you should be able to do it in the future with pretty much all of them. Um, I'll show you in ROM Manager that he's listing almost all the custom ROMs in there now. And also we're just gonna go through quickly on set CPU just to make sure you guys are actually using that correctly and uh, getting your, your droids actually uh, overclocked. So anyway, let's go right into this. Uh, first thing we need to do is just pull up ROM Manager. There we go. Little clockwork orange looking guy. Um, they give you new warnings. So first thing you're gonna probably have to do is upgrade to the newest ROM manager if you haven't. So go into the market and check for that. And they've added a little warning saying they're not responsible for damage. Um, next thing, next thing you're gonna want to do is uh, make sure you got the newest Clockwork mod recovery, which is 1783. And by the time you watch this, there could be a new version out there. So just make sure you know you upgrade to that, and they'll prompt you to do that. So no worries there. And then the next thing you need to do. Well, first of all, if you pay for the, uh, I think it's $3.99 now for the premium version, you can click on check for ROM updates and it'll check and see if there's new versions available and things like that. But since I haven't paid for that yet, and I, I will because we need to, uh, you know, all support Kush and all the amazing work he's done on this ROM. But anyway, for us that don't have the premium account, just go to download ROM. And then as you can see now, he's listing all the big ones in your Bugless Beast and their Ultimate Droids in their next theme and stuff like that. So um, they're not unlocked. I think they might be in the premium version. I'll have to figure that out once I, once I actually purchase that. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and click on Cyanogen Mod. And in here to list all the versions that are currently available. And since I'm on 505 and I want 505.3, all you really have to do is just tap on that. It's going to prompt you for Google Apps. Make sure you click on that. It includes all the uh, actual Google Apps like Gmail and stuff like that. Um, next thing you want to do, um, you can either back up your existing ROM or wipe data and cache. And since we're just going from 505 to 5053, you don't necessarily need to do either of these. Um, if you don't have a backup yet of your 505 ROM, I would go ahead and do that now. I'm going to skip it because I already have a couple of those. But wipe data and cache, you can definitely leave that one alone. So all you got to do now is click OK and it should boot our phone into recovery and really should just start installing it automatically so let's hopefully hopefully make sure it does that correctly okay and there we go and it says installing from SD card installing update finding update all that stuff and there's times when it looks like this hangs up a little bit, but like I keep telling you guys, just be patient. It will get through it. So we'll let it just roll on through. And there it goes. You can see it whipping through. Install from SD card complete. And there we go. Finish that quick. So it doesn't take long. And when this boots back up, we should be at 5053 Cyanogen Mod. Any second now. Okay, there we go. Uh, usually when these first load up, I give them a chance just to kind of sit here and work everything out. There's a bunch of processes they got to run in the background, like definitely getting your SD card all set up and just giving it a sec, maybe waiting for that to go away. And when you first, you know, unlock it, sometimes it gives it, you know, a better chance to respond right away. It's custom ROM and it's, you know, making a lot of changes. So sometimes just let it finish up. Okay, so if we go ahead and unlock... Um, when you upgrade to 5053, it is going to give you seven screens right away. And on 505, it defaulted to just five. So to change that, you go into options, configure. And then up top here, we got screen size. It says it's set at five, but it's really not set at five. Um, so go ahead and set it to seven. Do a set and it'll restart the launcher. You can go ahead and say yes. And we'll let that refresh. Okay. And now we're going to go right back in. We're going to go right back into options if it'll let me. 
and configure and go back up to screen size sorry sometimes after a launch or refresh it 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 runs a little slow okay and then we can drop it back down to five and go set and do a restart on the launcher and I don't know why I just loaded Fring, but it did. Anyways, that should set us now at five in my, yep, sure enough, there's my beautiful widgets, which is my main screen. And if we scroll now, you can see I'm at five. Can't go any further than that. So that's how you get it back to five. Um, next thing I wanted to, actually, I'll just show you really quick that we are at Cyanogen. Uh, 5053 if you go into about and scroll down there you go cyanogen 5053 okay got that out of the way next thing i want to show you is set cpu um really all you have to do is load this up and actually i'll just show you like as if the first time you've loaded it up you'll get that prompt screen that'll allow you or ask you to um um, give you or give them give set CPU access to your phone. Okay, so that might prompt you first And the next thing we need to do is do auto detect make sure you always do auto detect on here And now it's gonna ask for a request to root and just say okay And it'll prompt you and you probably hit remember and allow there. I've already done that So it's not prompting me again. Okay, the next thing it'll probably pop up and you'll be on 600 megahertz Okay, so if you want to overclock to 1000 you need to make sure up here. It actually says 1000 okay there, there's times when this might be all the way up to a thousand but doesn't say that in order to get it to do that all you really have to do is just do a quick drag down and a quick drag back up and then it'll set it at whatever speed you want so i actually like to run mine at 800 so i drop mine to 800. Okay. next thing you want to do is make sure you check set on boot so that every time you reboot your phone it actually sets it at 800. if you don't do that it'll drop it back down to 600. okay so make sure you leave it there and i want mine at 800 please a little touchy okay 800 um, next thing you can do is set up some profiles and really the only profile I have set up in here is pretty much my fail safe one down here and I have mine set up that if it gets greater than 41 degrees Celsius my phone temp then I have it drop back down to 600 and you can actually go in and modify that and have you can change the temperature to whatever you want and you can have it drop down to whatever you want you could have it drop down to incredibly slow if you want and I also have it just set as on demand um, you can check with those profiles and do some searches to find out, you know, the best ways to set those to get better performance, better battery life. Um, on demand essentially is set up as um, it, it probably drains your battery the fastest and performance probably saves your battery the most. But on demand, you know, makes your phone probably run the smoothest. So anyway, that's uh, set CPU and that's how you get from Cyanogen 505 to 5053 using ROM manager. And like I said, in the future, you're probably going to be able to do that with all of those ROMs like Ultimate Droid and Bugless Beast and stuff like that. So make sure you get ROM manager and make sure you get that paid version to support Kush and all the work he's been doing. So if you've got any questions, comments, leave them at the blog.